Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Jake's Take with Jacob Ayashar, fifth anniversary season kickoff mine. My name is Jacob Ayashar. I'm the Jake host of the Jake's Take with Jacob Ayashar podcast and the chief content producer and writer at jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're listening to this on any of our audio platforms, please subscribe and please download this episode and more episodes. I'm thrilled for to welcome our next guest today. She is a Billboard Top 10 recording artist. She has received praise from the New York Magazine, New York Times, and Southern Living. She has toured with Carrie Underwood, Cliff Black, Emmy Lou Harris, and Taylor Swift. And as of this recording, she has over 23,800 YouTube subscribers, 78,000 Instagram followers, and 295,000 Facebook followers. So please let me welcome Laura Bryan to the podcast. Hey! <laughs> hey, everybody! Hey, Laura, thank you so much for taking time to schedule to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, Especially for your fifth anniversary. Yeah, this is amazing. I started the podcast way back in November 2019, and I never imagined that 20, this time would reach five years. Holy cow. And you know, what's so great is like, even during the pandemic, you made this happen and kept everybody connected. So that's incredible. What a, what a milestone. Thank you so much, Laura. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for helping me celebrate this milestone. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So, Laura, when did you get interested in performing and how did that passion involve desire to pursue a career in the recording industry? You know, I have always loved singing. I've always loved uh, touching people's heart, entertaining any way that I could. And, and whether it was in my parents' basement and now doing arenas and all of the above. So it's kind of just been in my blood. And, and I've never been somebody that's I've never done drugs or anything like that, but I totally understand that high. It's that one of those things where you're just like, I have to have it. Come get me. Come get me. And so I'm totally hooked. I, it's, yeah, it's, it's a drug. It's a dream, all of the above. So, but yeah, it really started off as, as a child when I, you know, just sit in the basement and loving music and sit there performing with my parents and my, and my sisters and stuff. And, and, uh, but really like I, I've always loved country music and it's really stuck with me and, and in my heart with, you know, the, the lyrics, the melodies, and, you know, it's about real life and things that you're going through and real life experiences and that kind of thing. And so when my brother was, was young, was young anyway, but so sick and he had a brain aneurysm and uh, I'm from, the middle of nowhere in Maryland, <laughs> we would drive to Washington DC every day, my mom and I, because uh, my father had recently passed away when my brother, uh, a month before my brother went into the hospital and we would drive back and forth from Maryland to DC. And, you know, it's a good 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half, depending on traffic on 495, God bless it. And uh, we would be listening to country music. And that was, you know, we were listening to fun songs. We were listening to sad songs. We were listening to all different kinds of things and stories and uh, songs that were storytelling and whatnot. And so those were things that we were, we could relate to. There we were driving along one day, we'd feel good. Another day it was, you know, uh, morning, you know, didn't, there wasn't any progress or anything like that. So, uh, you know, there he was in a coma for six and a half months. And that's where I got into music really is listening to country music. And then I really, I, uh, while my brother was there, he got into, uh, you know, it was a long process of learning how to walk and talk and all those different kinds of things when he woke up and make a wish was a saving grace. They came to grant my brother's wish. And my brother actually was like, you know, I'm getting better. So why don't you give it to somebody else who really needs it? So to me, I, you know, yes, that's how I got into music, but it's also how I learned to give back. And I gotta say, that's an incredible story. Like seriously, I never imagined that someone say, hey, wait a minute, I'm getting better. I'm feeling, getting closer yeah. to being healed. Give it to somebody else. That is such a beautiful story of giving back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, my brother's an incredible, he's an incredible man and an incredible human being and, and such a heart of gold. So, I mean, what a great role model to have in my life. Absolutely. So speaking of role models, who are some of the recording artists that helped shape your sound? 
Oh gosh, you know, I and I love where music's at today. You know, everybody's listening to all different kinds of music on their computers, their phones, all different things and iPads. And so what I love is that everybody listening to all, all different kinds of genres because I think as artists that's what influences you is the different people you listen to and and mine's all over the place like I I love I love some Winona Judd Chris Stapleton is a oh I love him I love his voice I love uh his guitar playing everything you feel every emotion that he sings um I love Dolly Parton for just being an entertainer but also just uh for her being so philanthropic. I love her. I, I love her sass. I love her attitude. I love just her love of life too. Um, but I mean, I obviously wasn't around when Elvis was around, but I love his music. I love that he did everything. He did all different styles of music. So I, I definitely have had some great influences and I love me some good Etta James too. Oh, the blues just hits me right there. So, I mean, it's kind of shaped who I am. I love, you know, I love country music, a little, little sass attitude in your face, but I love the blues and you definitely get that rock kind of vibe too. So it, it's definitely a high energy show when you come to a Laura Bryna event. <laughs> That's amazing. And I got to say, I love me some Dolly too. I had the opportunity in my life to have, be on the phone with 24 other, two dozen other reporters and just get my question asked, answered by Dolly both times. Oh. It's still the most amazing thing on the planet. And she even sang a few bars of Kansas City during my first time meeting with her. Ah, uh, that's so great. Yeah, you know, she, and she, what you see is what you get. She's as real as it comes. So I actually, um, a dear friend of mine, Dane Bryan, um, we've, we've done some shows together and things like that. And just absolutely a dear friend. He actually uh, was the one that produced the Dolly Parton and Olivia Newton-John, the last record that Olivia did, Jolene. So, and it's obviously highly acclaimed and all of those things. So he just said, he sent me pictures of the two of them together in the studio. And he said, she's as real as it is. She's like, you know, and he was said, he was sitting there. He's like, how do you produce Dolly Parton? Like, what do you, hi, can you sing this? And, and she was so real. She's like, produce me. Tell me what you want. I want to know what you want. And he said that's it was the, one of the greatest experiences ever. And she's and a ball of fun. Oh, my hat's a little messed up. Sorry. That's, a, that's <laughs> amazing because I got to say this. I love that record. That record that she did with Olivia gave me yeah. chills with Jolene. And I haven't seen Jolene together. It gave me chills. Chills. And that was like the last thing that Olivia recorded. So it was absolutely incredible and i'm so proud of him for producing it but yeah it's the two of them together just and they're both each other's cheerleaders you know like through the ups and downs of the industry and stuff like that they were always there for each other which i absolutely. think is really cool. and that's what I country is about is everybody really celebrates each other and everybody's successes and lifts everybody up when they're having a low moment too Absolutely. So speaking of lifting each other up, you had the opportunity to open up with Carrot to Carrot with Carrie Underwood and Luke Bryan and Tim McGraw, three incredible country, uh, modern day country icons. So what were some lessons that you learned to help you grow as a performer from that? You know, I, it's really, I, there's again, like Dolly, so real and so down to earth. It's really, yes, you get to do these incredible shows with them, but it's also about the hang backstage too. They're just like, hey, let's, you know, let's have, let's, grab a snack and hang out and whatever. So, it, which is, it was so great for me to really just be there one-on-one -on -one and hang out and, and get to know them as people too. And then see them recreate this magic night after night on stage. You know, there's, it's like they're telling the story for the first time or they're sharing the song for the first time. And they allow each listener, fan, whatever you want to say, be in that moment, share in that intimate moment as if they're the only person there. So it's just, to me, I learned so much by watching that. I mean, it's like, okay, you know, you sit there, every little thing. I mean, I, I had a chance to open for Emmy Lou Harris too, who's a fellow Marylander as well. And I mean, Grammys, no, I mean, everything. And just such a class act. And you know, and you never know, like, you don't know that they're going to sit there and watch your show, you know, who you're opening for. And I, as I'm walking off stage, she was like, I loved your show. And I was like, oh my God, like, it's one of those where you, like those teary eyed moments, you're like, did she, 
really just stand there and watch my show? I mean, like this is Emmy Lou Harris, some incredible icon of country music. So yeah, I mean, that's a, that's what I love. And like I said, like I love that about country music. Everybody's so supportive of one another. Like, hey, you know, when I worked with Clint Black, he's like, hey, Laura, you know, I want to I want to show you this, or hey, you know, let's let's do something together here or whatnot. I mean, it's really about supporting one another. It's a big family. Absolutely, and it feels like with country music today, what I'm looking into as a long time music journalist since I've been reviewing some music since 2011. I've noticed a lot, there's still the more storytelling elements of country. Country music has the only ability to tell those stories and weave. Because I don't feel anything from hip-hop. I rarely feel anything from R&B. And same with pop and with this mainstream pop. But country still has its roots and its storytelling. It definitely does. And it's like, they... Uh it definitely ties all of those things together. Like, and, and in such a clever way, like the double entendres or um, the, you know, the double meaning, different things like that. And, and it is, it's all about a great story and a great lyric and a great melody. I mean, uh, you know, Luke Combs has his new song um, where the wild things are, you know? So it's just, it, it's definitely, uh, it, it, there's definitely some, rhyme or reason why somebody writes this or they record it. It's not just like, oh, this was a great song. There's there's a reason. There There's an attachment. It's in their heart. It's in their blood. They feel that song. Absolutely. And speaking of songs, that was a perfect segue to talk about the stories behind. I took some of your songs that are most streamed on Spotify, and I would love to learn some of the stories behind them. Okay. <laughs> I love that. So I got so I gotta say before we got out started, I was listening to certified and has of this recording 226,000 streams on Spotify. Oh, certified is so fun. I got to write that with Josh Logan and Kenny Fleetwood. And we sat down and I was like, you know, I love sassy, I love attitude, I love in your face, I love edgy, all of the above. And we we're talking about uh there was a girlfriend of mine who was in this, you know crazy relationship as, as you do but she met this guy and now the relationship's over of course but um he just thought he was all that in a bag of chips and he was like hey you know mm, and like you know and in certified it says you know if you're a 10 i'm 11 and all of these things and he was always trying to one up and i'm like eh, honey that ain't it that is not how it happens we need to get rid of this one and move on to the next one so <laughs> we're still looking but um, but yeah, it was, it, it was really fun. A lot of sass, a lot of attitude and, uh, you know, aren't we all a little crazy? I mean, if you're crazy, I'm definitely crazier. I love to push the edge. So we like to take it as far as we can. And yeah, sir, five, it's been so great with the video. Um, Zane and his whole team, they've like, it's like Yellowstone in a new kind of steampunk way. And, and it was just such a blast. Oh, by the way. And at the end of the video, um, you see us ride off into the sunset. By the by the way, my partner, my love interest, his horse was having the farts the whole time. And we're, we're like this, how are you not supposed to be laughing? And it's just going, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. so yeah, there behind the scenes is really funny. And then there I was with a couple corsets on trying to keep them all up and this and all. So there's always the fun behind the scenes. Um but um but yeah, you know, we've gotten some interesting comments about the video and, and, you know, it's some people have been like, well, why does she have to sound like that? Or why is it, you know, why is a girl like that? You know, I don't know. But, you know, the thing I have to say that I've learned too about those great icons that we were talking about is that you have to be true to yourself. You have to be authentic because you know what people know of you ain't. And life is too short to be something that you're not. And I, to me, I only know how to be me. And I, I want people to connect with me, the real person that I am. And I love to have a good time. I love to push the edge. You know, I love, I love a great ballad with, um, that, that's sensitive, that's, that, um, that's emotional and all of those things. And so I got to be me. And I think that's what we all need to do too. So. Absolutely. And speaking of sass, you brought up one of my all-time favorite songs is Shannon Jackson's Black Cat. And you did a wonderful cover of it. I was ah! listening to it on, on a stream before we got on to the stream. 
251,000 streams on Spotify. I love that version of it. Thank you so much. I mean, I, you know, Janet Jackson is just incredible. In fact, oh, we have another fun cover coming out soon. Uh, little tease, tease um, from another amazing female icon, Joan Jett. Um, it's a little sassy. It's a, it's a lot of rock, but it's its own kind of a rock country version of I Hate Myself for Loving You. And it's kind of got those judsy kind of harmonies too. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun in that sense. But uh, but yeah, I mean, Black Cat, I, I'm a huge fan of Janet. And it's, it's Tim Pierce is playing guitar on it, which if you know Tim Pierce, he is a monster guitar player. He's played on a million and five things, all the greatest records. So uh, I was really, really fortunate and so blessed to have him on it. But, but yeah, I, uh, I love it. It's, it's, you know, it's definitely that rock and roll kind of fun song. So thank you for saying that. I am so touched. You know, when I take, when I do a cover of a song, I always either, you know, you want to pay homage to the artist, but you also want to make it your own. So thank you for saying that. I so appreciate that. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. So right now, as this recording, we're in the middle of the holiday season and one of your songs, wish list has been getting a lot of us and has been recording 1.1 million Spotify streams. Yeah, I know. It's so crazy. It's like, you know, you write these songs and you never know like what they're going to be or what they're going to turn out to be or anything. And there I was like in the airport, The da I think I was on a layover in Dallas. And there I am like taking a like a napkin from the food court and sitting there like on the phone with Damon, one of my co-writers, Damon, and I'm, and he's on with the other co-writer, Eric. And we're like, what if it goes like this? And it sounds like this and the dear Santa. And then and I'm like, write this down. And all this. so, I mean, you never know. And I love that people are just loving it. I mean, it's so exciting. And, um, you know, we wanted to create this holiday, uh, tradition, classic, all of the above. And we wanted something that, was up tempo, something people could dance to and have fun. I mean, I guess obviously Mariah Carey is a big inspiration for our song, but and I love what she does. And so it was definitely we wanted to create something like that and, and keep with the classic and whatnot. So, but you know what's so great that I wanted to tell you that came out today? It's number nine on the iTunes chart and and raising up and it's number one on the what's in store chart for the second week in a row <laughs> yay i mean i was like to be on these charts with so many icons as well like i mean with miley cyrus and like jelly roll and then you got like taylor swift and olivia and, and it's a top 20 billboard on the adult contemporary chart i mean and then it's a top five on the media base holiday charge i mean it's like it, it's a, unbelievable I, again i'm very blessed i'm so excited it's definitely the dream come true so uh but i so couldn't wait to share that with you <laughs> and i am so excited to share that with me and i gotta say this i definitely think wishless definitely has a chance to be on the same playlist as brenda lee's rocking around the christmas tree where is all i wanted for christmas for you darlene loves Christmas baby, please come home. Uh, Those class, essential classics. Oh, that's a huge compliment. I love that. Thank you. I and not to mention, I could also see a, a, another amazing holiday song is Cher and Cindy Lauper's "Put a Little Holiday in Your Heart." I could also add to the mix of five Christmas songs that are necessary for any holiday playlist. Oh, thank you. I, I really that that that, mm, that makes me tear up. Thank you. I so appreciate that. I uh, yeah, I never expected all of this and i mean then we did like the hollywood christmas parade and and there we were on a in a car with all these floats and different actors in hollywood and 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 yeah you know, it just it was such a magical event all of this has been so magical and definitely definitely a pinch you moment because you, again you don't concoct this in your brain when you're like hi i want to sing and i I want to touch people's hearts and I want to give back and I want to help people and whatever that is, you just, it's just been a dream come true is really what I can say. And, and in this era, and in this era, you have not just the icon, you do not have Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You also have Hollywood and you have Disney and I have Disney's parade and right. have all these parades, park parades as well. So you got into one of the, mo the three most important parades in this holiday season. I know. One of three. That's crazy. It is so crazy. And, you know, like really to sit there at the parade and have people sing the lyrics back to you. 
I think that's like the biggest compliment or that's really when you know, wow, this dream has really come true or is really coming true. Like, oh my God, I made it, you know, like it's um, makes you cry, but like you, you really, my song made somebody feel something. They, they want to sing, they want to dance to it. And it's really an incredible feeling. I never knew that that would happen. And that's amazing. I'm so happy that happened for you, Laura. Thank you. I'm so happy I get to share it with you and everybody else. Thank you so much. So get this. Jawbreaker is your most Spotify stream song with 1.3 million streams as of this recording. Yes. <laughs> so, so incredible. That, tell you guys have a story about that? Sure. I So... My co-writers for Wishlist are my co-writers for Jailbreaker too. And uh, it's definitely, we, and definitely, like you say, as a country song, you know, you got the double entendres and we were talking about that and the different double meanings. So, I mean, who doesn't like a, a little candy Jailbreaker, you know? But again, it goes with the whole sassy attitude and like, look, I ain't taking none of your stuff for that. So, uh, but it's definitely one about, about those, you know, a guy that's trying to, pull one on you and you're like, mm -mm, no, no, you can't have this. You know, you can't have me now or later. We got all the little candy references and things like that. So, um, but yeah, it's, and like the video, Justin Key and his team from Taillight Productions, we did the, we shot the video in Nashville and who also did the video for Wishlist. And um, it's kind of like that Moulin Rouge meets Roadhouse kind of, Coyote ugly kind of thing. And obviously the jaw, uh, uh, oh my God, the, the jawbreaker movie, but all of those different things. It's also, you know, it's just so fun, but, um, and they kind of like twisted and turned it all up and like kind of mushed it all together. And it was such a fun video. Mind you, it was so disgustingly hot in the middle of like July. Everybody's like, oh my God. <laughs> we're sweating and disgusting but it you know it really is a it was a, such a fun video to create and and it's neat to see your songs come to life and and take on a whole new meaning because the video yes you have the song and this is what you intended but then you have these different uh directors and production companies that come up with their own interpretation of the song and then it creates a whole nother story behind behind the song too so it's been really fun Actually, you brought up when you, when you mentioned Coyote Ugly, one song that got in my head quickly is Diane Warren, Leanne Ryan's Can't Fight That Moonlight. I would love oh. to hear your rendition of that song. That song's one of my all-time favorite. Oh, I, it's such a good song. I love that song. Can't fight the moonlight. It's one of my all-time <laughs> favorites, and I think that would be a wonderful job to transform that. If you can, it's because it's like sassy. It's like incredible. It's like so hypnotic. Yes, it is a fun song. It does make you just want to dance on the bar, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of dancing and collaborating and singing, who are some of your dream collaborators? They're singers, songwriters, musicians, and producers. And how would they enhance your sound, Laura? Oh, wow. Oh, I love that. You know, I, I'm loving it. Like, oh, gosh, there's a lot of great music out there right now. A lot of great artists. Obviously, I'd, I'd love to do a collaboration with Chris Stapleton. I love, and he, uh, his producer, Dave Cobb is fantastic. Um, but I love, you know, Chris Stapleton, you feel every word that he sings and, and everything that he writes. Um, I mean, there he was doing the national anthem and he made every word ring. I mean, you had football players sobbing, just hearing that. And but he does. He's he's such an emotional singer, and you you hear and feel every single thing he's talking about. Um, you know, I love Dolly Parton. I love her writing. I love uh, she's got you know she's got the fun up tempo, but she's got some really. I mean, I will always love you. So iconic. Uh, so I mean, yeah. I mean, I and I love her rock star album too. Is so fantastic. But you know, I I, I I'm loving this new wave of country too. Like I love. The Morgan, like I, Morgan, I love like the production, his production, but I love Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll has got such a great story. Um, I love how real he is and the things he's been through. Um, 
his producers. I, I love that he works with this great group called Scatterbrains. They write a lot of this stuff together. Um, and I just, it's not, it's different. It's not, I love that they push the edge, like nothing is the same. Um, but yet, you know, Jelly Roll is so appreciative of the things that, I mean, obviously he's been through a lot of heartache too, but um, they, uh, it, he continues to grow as an artist and is always so grateful for where he's been and where he's going and the things that have happened to him. So I love that about him. And, and I'm so lucky I'm getting ready to go in the studio and write with uh, the scatterbrain group. So I'm really excited about that. So Come on, Jelly Roll, let's write a little song or hum a few tunes together. <laughs> I totally agree. And by the way, Laura, when you mentioned some of the, with Chris Stapleton, I got to say, I loved his version of Elton John's I Want Love that he did years ago. It was oh. so amazing. You need to listen to that after this. Yeah, video. yeah. By, and by the way, speaking of Elton, speaking of Elton, one rock star, one of the best albums, one of the best albums I love, but Dolly's version of Elton, the first time since they record saying, Imagine turning the lights up when they leave way back first time in ages that 19 years that they came back and sang together. And oh my God, when they did Don't Let Sun Go Down on Me, that oh. track was was chanting. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just, you're just, oh. Yeah, you know what? That whole Rockstar album is so good. And it's like just all the different artists that are on it. And, oh, yeah. and how Dolly made it her own is so fantastic. I mean, I love the, um, she worked with Ann Wilson and, and I mean, God, uh, magic man. It's just, Oh, <laughs> and then I got to say whatever rock and roll done, what has rock and roll done with you with Stevie Nicks? Oh my God. That's just right. Oh. And then I got to say wrecking. She, she and Miley took wrecking ball to a whole nother level of excellence. All another level. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So Laura, we got to start winding down our conversation. So where can my audience find your music and connect with you on social media? You all can find me at Laura Bryna, L-A-U-R-A-B-R-Y-N-A.com. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagram. we got TikTok. We've got Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, blah, 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 all of the above. So definitely I'm the one that you talk to. So, you know, please reach out, comment. Um, I, I am the one that answers. So I, I love connecting with everybody. Bryniax. I love you all. So come be a Brainiac. We love everybody. We're, we accept everyone. Um, it's a positive space for everyone to be. And, you know, when everybody's having a bad day, we just lift you up and, and we celebrate the good things and, and everybody's accepted. Uh, we celebrate who you are, what you are, all of the above. So definitely check us out. Laura Bryna. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Hey, guys. If you miss an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Show podcast, visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, Spotify, and Spreaker. Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Show, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media, too. Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and YouTube. Jacob Elias Show, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And guys, make sure you check out Jake's Take Jake's that's shake.com because you'll find my interviews with Dolly Parton. You'll find it with Cindy Lauper. You'll find it with Kenny, the late and great Kenny Rogers and Gordon Lightfoot and all these incredible artists. Plus my take on Laura's music and others on Jake's that's shake.com. Once again, Jake's that's shake.com. Laura, thank you so much for helping me kickstart the season five, season, season five of the Jake's Sake with Jacob Elijah podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate it. It was so much fun. I'm so glad you had fun. I'm so great to have, but I had fun with you too. So guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, everybody, have a great one. Goodbye.